Hi guys, welcome back to the shop again. Um, today's video is going to be another unboxing video, a bit like the drill press table. Today I've got myself a new lathe. Um, it's the Charnerwood W824. Um, I got it on a Halloween special um, and it arrived yesterday. Today what we're going to do is we're going to have a little unboxing, see what we've got, see what we think of it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in a bit. We've got the instructions, the right ones for the lathe as well. It looks like it's the four prong center and the live center, big thing. Spanner, some, it looks like two hooks. Sure, what that other piece is, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, a funky new screwdriver. Got a really plastic feeling tool rest. We've got the centre punch. this. Hey sweetheart. Hey, hello. Say hello to the camera. Hello. <laughs> I can see like this. Yeah. But I can see down here. <laughs> hello. Hello. Daddy. What are you doing pal? I was trying to go out. Dad but I couldn't get these out of the box. Are you going to help me? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to do Okay, the lathe comes with um, variable electronic speed, but when you turn it on, you can increase and decrease the speed of the lathe using this switch. But it's also belt driven, and there's two different uh, belt pulleys. Um, that you can adjust for variable speed as well. So we'll show you that now. And there's our two pulleys. Now, when the belt is in the left hand position, the range in speed is 500 RPM all the way up to 2000. And if it's on the right hand pulley, it's 1000 RPM up to 4000 RPM. So at the moment, it's in its slowest setting. So what we can do is we can change that to the fast setting. Okay, so let's fire it up and see how she turns. So we'll just make sure that the, uh, the headstock isn't locked. This is the locking the nut. And you can lock the headstock down using this. And you can take off your face plates and add your chucks and we'll just tighten that up don't and just tighten that up there we go take off our release and away we go 
So let's light it up and let's see how she turns. Okay, well she's very quiet, I'll give it that. So that's almost at a thousand RPM straight away on its low setting. We'll turn it up now. The tailstock is also hollow, so you can put your centre punch in to knock out your bits, and your attachments and stuff, and the headstock is also hollow. Okay, so the all-important test, of course, is to see that the sensors are lined up. So I'm just going to bring in the tail stuff. And we'll see how they get the cam lock off. There's a little bit of movement in the tail stock, but once. Right, yeah, there you go. Once you lock that down, that goes nice and true. Okay, so this is my uh, this is my old lathe, the outgoing lathe, the Charmwood W815. Um, considerably smaller when you put it side by side than the other one. Um, this one has served me well. I shall miss it once it's gone. Um, we've turned a lot of pens on this and a few projects. Um, and I'll be sad to see it go. Yeah, it's been a good little lathe, but it is down to show its age. Um, so I came into some money recently. Not a lot, but enough to to purchase that one. We'll come to that one in a second as well when it comes to about the money. Um, so yeah, that one's going to be on the bench a lot more than this one. But this one you could lift off quite easy because it's not that heavy. Um, that one weighs quite a bit, so I think that's going to be on the lay on the uh, the workbench a lot more. We might actually have to build a a mobile stand for that and we'll put it over there with the others. We'll see. We'll uh, see how it goes. Okay, guys, that's it for the unboxing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let's just talk a little bit about why I chose that particular lathe over anything else that's on the market. Um, factor number one, above all else, was cost. Um, I only had a set budget and that dictated what kind of lathe I could get. It, this one that I bought is not my original choice. The one I was going to get originally was the Axminster AC305WL um, and I was going to get that from a store up in Dublin. Now the cost of that lathe was a little bit more expensive than the Charmwood one. Um, the Charmwood one has come as a package deal. It came as a lathe and the chuck. Chuck is still on the post. That's on its way to me. Um, the a the other one, the Axminster, didn't. So there was the cost of the lathe, there was the cost of the chuck, and there was also the cost of delivery. Um, the Axminster was going to cost me an extra sixty-five euro to get transported from Dublin, whereas the Charmwood one um, was free. Um, it also I got a ten percent deal on the price of the Charmwood one for the Halloween special. So in total I paid 510 euro for that new lathe. Whereas the Axminster one was going to cost me in excess of 650. So pennies they count. With the money that I saved I have invested in a new pen mandrel which is on its way to me. It should be here Thursday. Um, today is Tuesday. Uh, and I've also ordered some pen jaws for the chuck that's on its way to me as well. Um, and I've still saved money on the price. Um, my overall impression of the lathe so far is I'm quite impressed with it. It's very nice. It, everything works well. It's quiet. It's robust. There's no vibrations. Um, there's no paint missing. Um, apart from the tailstock being a little bit stiff, um, that was cured with a quick spray of silicon spray, and that's fixed the problem. It's no problem. Um, I've taken the cable ties off the back of the lathe, but that was getting on my nerves with the hat with the locking pin for the tailstock, so that's gone. Um, 
but apart from that, yeah, I'm really pleased. I can't wait to start my first project. Hopefully on Thursday, when the, the new mandrel will arrive, I can crack in straight away. I've got some new blanks that also arrived today, and I can get some new pens done. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys on the next one, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.